<laughs> okay, so let's dive into this a little bit. A lot of quotes came out of this conversation I was intrigued by. The Kobe Bryant thing is interesting because he alluded to how he had a friendship with Kobe Bryant. And this is actually what he said to Howard Stern regarding that entire terribly sad situation. Even, you know, as like as it relates to Kobe Bryant, you know, like Kobe thought he had a long life, too, you know. Right. And I mean, nobody loved him. I mean, I loved watching Kobe play. I think in a lot of ways, he and I had the same mentality. And, you know, we had a great connection because of a mindset. And when I look at his life, you know, we all think we're going to live forever. Right. But the reality is we don't know when our day is going to come. So I could sit here and go, well, stop playing football so I could, you know, worry about what's going to happen or worry about this or that instead of saying, you know, why don't I live my life the way that I want and enjoy it, you know, in the ways that are going to be most fulfilling to me, which for me is doing what I love to do. You don't tell a musician, stop singing, right. you know, at age of 42. You don't tell a great painter, stop painting at 42. Now, if you want to stop, stop, go ahead. But for me, because I feel like I can still play, doesn't mean I should just stop playing because that's what everyone's telling me to do. That was in regards to Howard Stern asking him why he didn't just retire. Why did you not sail off into the sunset? Why did you not, after winning six Super Bowls, playing for 20 years, having accomplished everything, you're healthy, no CTE, he said it seemed like, he said no concussion, not a lot of concussions. Why didn't you just retire? And he basically answered with the Mamba mentality. That's what he did. He was like, well, you don't ask people that are old in these different sports or different uh, works, why don't they retire? And I think that's a beautiful thing. If you read that Players' Tribune that Tom Brady wrote the other day on Derek Jeter's thing because he's living in his house, 30,000 square feet, bad Wi-Fi, you need to get those boosters, Tom. <laughs> need to get those boosters. need to get them boosts. I assume in Boston, in your house in California, you had some super tech person set it up to your standards. Derek Jeter, you see the way he runs a baseball club? He's not up on those little finer details. <laughs> uh, I mean, no. he does not have, he's not up on the finer details. We all know that. But because the Zoom crashed, by the way, for that's what we are referring to. But he answered with the Mamba mentality about how I love my sport, is what he said in the Players Tribune article. He said, I love my sport. I absolutely love it. Earlier in the interview, Howard Stern asked him about why he didn't, he didn't get into baseball. He was drafted out of high school, obviously. And he said he just loves football. Everything about it. This guy might play for the next 10 years. <sighs> He might play for the next 10 years. He talked about how in 2000 he started using vitamin or started uh, not our vitamins, but actual vitamins. And he started like changing his diet because he wasn't, he said he wasn't born with all the physical uh, traits that you could possibly need to be your best uh, in a sport. He said, I had to figure out what my advantages were going to be. He said he started in the vitamins, uh, vitamins before the vitamin craze happened in 2000. And then obviously he's gone into TB12 treatment. I think he's completely plant-based at this point. He feels as if the food that he puts in his body is a weapon and gives him an advantage over the people that have maybe a better physical uh, composition than him. And I think he might play for another... 10 years. I, I don't know if Tom Brady's ever going to slow down. There was a lot of passion in that interview. Yep. It was a guy that was ready to go. Already moved down to Tampa Bay. I mean, who's moving in the middle of this? Nobody. I'll tell you who's moving in the middle. The people that can just get planes and, and do <laughs> yeah. it. But Tom Brady is moving in the middle. Of this. He, he, he could have stayed at his house in L.A., I assume. He has a house in Costa Rica, by the way. He has a house in Boston. He mentioned that in the conversation. He said that's where Giselle was before this whole thing started. And they've, we've had it for like five years or so down in Costa Rica. The Incredible. Good for you. He's moving. To, he's already moved into Tampa. He's already down there. I would assume that's because he wants to get acquainted with everything down there. Now, granted, you're in quarantine. You can't really do much, but I assume he can go over. No, the facilities are closed. I don't know why he's down there. Maybe the coaches come over to his house. Something there. There has to be a reason he's getting down there and getting acclimated. I like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers more Right now, and I haven't heard the last 20 minutes of that conversation where I would assume they dig into his mindset a little bit more in his current state. I can't wait to hear that. I like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers more right now than I did before that interview, and I cannot wait to watch the Bucs in their new uniforms that look exactly the same as their old uniforms, mm -hmm. not just these bad uniforms. I wonder if Bruce Arians saw those uniforms when he got down there last year. He was like, can we change these damn numbers? <laughs> uh, one more year, we're doing it next year. And, and when we bring Tom Brady down here, we're going to do the same thing. So sorry to interrupt. If you're a man watching this, you deserve to have long, great <laughs> And you can do that now with our friends at Roman. Right now you go to GetRoman.com, you get $10 off and free two-day shipping on Roman Swipes, which are guaranteed to make you have longer, more fulfilling 
every time you get in the sack. Now let's get back to the fornicate in action. He said that there was a lot of teams interested in him, by the way. And out of respect for their privacy, he's not going to say anything. Now it had come out that the Colts were not, though. That was a team that was not interested in them. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the Titans weren't, right, because they signed Tannehill to a, a bigger deal. Yep. Obviously, the Niners weren't because they decided not to make a play for him with Jimmy G. So there, there was some – and he said the Raiders didn't seem that interested in signing. So you can take all the teams out that we potentially thought were going to be interested, and now it's time to start guessing. That's what we'll probably do tomorrow. I mean, just to be honest, it's probably what we're going to do tomorrow. What teams have an established starting quarterback right now? that you think potentially reached out and say, hey, what are we thinking? Well, what are we thinking? I'm sure there was numerous, and that's why he said, out of respect for their privacy, I'm not going to say anything. There had to be some teams in there. Bears. Had to sure. Be. Sure. Had sure. To be. Well, had I, I heard that. I just assumed that Jerry Jones and him had talked. Like the Cowboys had made some sort of play for him. Right. What are we thinking, Tom? <laughs> You see my living room here? You see my Zoom? Uh, they just put it up on social media the other day. Everybody loves it. What are you thinking? It was, I mean, that was an awesome interview. That was an awesome conversation. A lot to digest, but we got to get to a break. 12 minutes after the hour. Um, man, I wish, can you just, I don't know what's Kuth in radio. If we just give courtesy and just play his show. <laughs> I assume we get shut down. We are on Sirius. Yeah. We are on Sirius. Mm -hmm. But we're also on the FCC. Tom and Howard were both getting a little loose with the language. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Refreshing to hear Tom Brady swear, by the way. Yes. If somebody doesn't swear whenever I'm talking to him, I I don't trust them. I can't trust them. Now, granted, there's some people who are like super religious, like Tim Tebow's never gonna swear. I assume Philip Rivers is never gonna swear. But if somebody has sworn before and you're in a deep conversation with them and they don't swear to you. They don't trust you, and you're not having a real conversation with them. Just a little tip that I've picked up through my days, especially as somebody who swears. <laughs> and it's weird hearing him say it, even though like you, you've you seen him mouth F-bombs. What? Yeah, Go! It, exactly. But it's still just like it's nice to know that he's not just a robot and that he's like an actual human being. By the way, his dad was going to be a priest. That's why he didn't smoke all the weed, just <laughs> some of the weed in high school.